Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So I'm excited to share with you another interview. So Rashika is one of my clients that we worked together last year and she just killed the recovery game. You know, she had such a lighthearted approach to recovery. It was just a joy working with Rashika. She went all in, she was finally able to overcome her extreme hunger, get her period back, overcome her fear of gaining any body fat and you know, she's gotten her life back. So I was so excited for her to come on and be willing to share her journey because I think that a lot of you guys are gonna resonate with her story, you know, her story that led into all of the dieting and exercise and weight suppression and then her journey through recovery uh, to where she is now. So yeah, I'll let her do the talking. So without further ado, let's head into the interview. So my story, it's it first started when I was um, nine years old and like it started all from there and I was a child with like you like I loved food like I was just a kid who like loved to eat I had like a really high appetite and like as usual I was a kid I was running around playing around and like yeah I loved food and like so what actually happened was that I think I reached a higher weight at a younger age compared to like the other kids but like yeah it didn't like it had no difference to me at all I was a happy kid I didn't care like the weight was coming on I just I was a happy kid but then what happened was like according to my mom like she was at like her set point weight was like she developed much later in life compared to I started like I started bleeding when I was like nine nine years old and like I developed early so that, yeah according to her that was like she got stressed because because I was trying to gain a lot of weight and so she was like okay let's get your food under control I was a nine-year-old kid I just I just wanted to eat I just like I had no issues and yeah so like that's when it all started and then she took me to a dietitian and it was my bad luck like it was a horrible like that lady was horrible so I was a nine-year-old kid and she put me on a 1200 calorie food limit and like um yeah she made me diet like I was a nine-year-old kid like I was meant to eat like only um one actual meal a day so like, she was like eat breakfast but like she was like eat um stop drinking milk stop eating cheese and like nine-year-old kid so that's when it all started and my mom like she didn't really know like if you don't really know much and she was like for her mentality it was like yeah my I'm helping my child out and she was like yeah um, it'll help me out in the future that's what she taught but no that's where it all began so like yeah I was nine-year-old and all of a sudden I was like weight conscious and like I had to stop um, like when I was out with my friends I stopped eating out we go to the mall I'd bring my own food from home in like a box like I stopped eating out I was weight conscious I started comparing my body to everyone else because according to my friends I was a bit larger but like yeah it didn't affect me until that lady put me on a diet and I got it in my mindset when I was nine year old, I was like, okay, I need to lose weight. That means I need to stop eating. So I actually stopped eating. Like I wouldn't, I would like eat breakfast and like I'd throw my food, which I was supposed to take to school and I'd eat food at night. So yeah, as a nine year old kid, I was like eating like, I'd, and I'd come home at night so hungry. And like, that's what my mom was seeing. like. I was eating all my food at once in a day. And that's what she was seeing. Like I wasn't letting her know that I was throwing away all my food the entire day. Cause I was like, okay, I'm apparently fat, which I was not at all. <laughs> like, yeah, that's how it all started. And yeah, that was when I was nine, it kind of went on the same way until like I was 16 living at home. So like, yeah, I'd go on all the diets, like, I did not like till now till I started recovery I have not been gone a single day when like eating food was just eating food like it was either I was binge eating because like I was going on a diet the next day or I was eating healthy food because like 
I wanted to lose weight. Like not a single day went by where I wasn't on like a weight loss journey. Like 12 years of my life have gone on a weight loss journey. So, oh my God, yeah. I cry sometimes thinking about this because like I wasted my entire like 12 years just wanting to be a size zero like I had told myself that once I get to that point like my life is made and all my issues I have until this point is because I'm not a size zero like my year like most of the people like when it starts like they think okay once I get to a size zero like the people when who have who are at the size zero they don't have any problems in life everything goes smoothly they have all the boys running after them and like that that was my entire mentality for like 12 years so I was like yeah get to a size zero so yeah so from 9 to 16 that's like kind of went like I would not eat but then like I couldn't not eat because I was a child so like I'd eat like my entire day's food at night and like yeah I tried all the diets I don't, I'm not really sure if this was a thing everywhere, but like there was a diet where you only eat like fruits for one day and then eat vegetables for a second day. And then you eat like meat the third day or something. I tried doing that. It lasted for like the first day, <laughs> like only eating fruits. And the next day I was like, yeah, no, I ate the entire house. Like whatever yeah. food was there. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to like remember what else I would do. Yeah, I wasn't allowed to eat out. Like I told myself I was like, I need to be a strong person. Like, man, I was like, I need to get to a size zero, which yeah. definitely wasn't my weight. Like I was never meant to be a size zero. That's why it was so hard. But yeah, I tried all the diets, like literally all the diets, like the juice diet. And like, I tried having just avocados for like an entire day. That didn't work. <laughs> and then I went, um, I stopped milk, cheese, meat, everything. That didn't work. <laughs> I stopped bread. I went like no carbs. Mm -hmm. That didn't work. So yeah, but the thing was from like nine to 16, I was still at home. So like, I couldn't like, not, I, I was still eating, like the mentality was still there. Like I had to die, I had to lose weight, but like I was still eating. So like, I was still fine mentally because like, I would still like eat lots at the end of the day. Cause like my mom would just like sometimes see me like not eating and she'd give me food. Mm -hmm. And like, so I was still at home and like, I was a kid. So like, I was still like eating. So it was like, it was bad, but like, it wasn't too bad. It got worse after <laughs> when I was, when I started living alone. Yeah. So yeah, from nine to 16, like I was working, I was, so I started exercising at nine, like weights and all, which was like, I was like, I wanted to find the one thing I was like, I tried each and every single diet that wasn't working. So I was like, I need the one thing that's going to make me a size zero. Like mm -hmm. I, I thought there was like one answer. So I was like, okay, maybe like I can't starve myself. Maybe so, I'll yeah. And so when you say that wasn't working, does that mean like you would try these diets and you wouldn't lose weight? Like you just stayed the same weight? Yeah. So that's the thing. Like I would diet, I would try it for like a day, but I'd end up eating like so much the next day. It would like okay. almost even out. And like, I, instead of losing weight, I was, my weight was actually increasing. That was like stressing me out even worse. Cause like, I'm putting in all this effort to starve myself, but I couldn't. So then I'd eat like around like six, 7,000 calories easily at the end of the day. It was, yeah. binge, and it was emotionally, it was horrible. Like I couldn't focus the next day. I was so bloated and like yeah. mentally like binge eating was like, oh. Like binge eating was like as worse as like not eating because like yeah. next day I would like I couldn't like be out I didn't want to leave the house at all because I didn't want to see anyone I'd be so bloated I feel yeah. ashamed of myself because wow. it takes a lot of effort to like not eat and then at the wow. end of the day when you just like give up and eat it's like yeah so binge eating was like it caused me so much stress in life. Oh, it was horrible. Yeah. Well, and I like that part. I mean, I don't like that you went through that, but I like that part because so many people think that, you know, they have, they have to 
get down to this super lean body or become emaciated to like have a problem around food, right? And to go through this diet recovery process, you know? That's my one thing is that if I would have just understood this when I was like 15, 16, or like even when I was nine, like if I would have just like understood it, because I wasn't because I thought when you have like when you're like anorexic, you have to be like really all bones and skin. And I wasn't. So I was like, I do not have an eating disorder. Yeah. And like it's only once I reached a size zero which like, I'm not saying I'm grateful that it happened, but like, if it wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have recovered because that's my thing. Like, I want to like get across, like you don't have to reach a size zero to get recovery. Cause like I wasted another like eight years of my life. Like instead I would have just like figured it out earlier on that I don't have to suffer around food my entire life. Like trying to get to a size zero is like not my life mission. Like I would have saved so many years, but like I didn't understand it until like I reached a size zero, like until I was like so starved where I was like all bones and I was like, I'd rather like blow my brains off than not eat. Like that's when I decided to recover, but that wasted like another eight years of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I remember when we were talking, you would say that like, I had to wait until like the bottom of rock bottom. Like, why couldn't I have just gotten this before? And like most people, unfortunately, like they have to, I mean, not everyone, luckily, but a lot of people are the same. Like I was the same. Like I was like, my body was shutting down, almost ready to die. And then I, then I was, you know, found this and I was willing to do it. It's like, that's the thing is like, so many people think that, but it's like, even if you like, there's so many, there's like a different, they're all types of eating disorders. Like mine started like, mine started when I was nine and like just like not trying to like not eat bread for example for one meal when like you clearly want the bread is also a sign like if you're not eating trying to like make your weight a certain weight which like you can't control your weight which is one thing I've also seen like my mom do is like she tries she thinks she has to like be a certain weight and she decides the weight like I grew up seeing her weigh herself every morning and like if she saw like it increased like a bit she'd eat less that day Mm. and like that's what I grew up thinking like you need to maintain your weight with the amount you eat but like now after like so long I figured out like you do not need to maintain your weight your body does every single thing like if you eat extra one day it does not matter at all and like I'm seeing it now too like some days like I wake up so hungry and like I eat so much in the beginning of the day and by like the afternoon like I'm so full and like I actually listen to my body and it's like yeah I was just hungry in the morning like and like the next day I'm fine and like I never need to maintain my weight ever again like yeah yeah Yeah. And so, okay, let's get into that because, you know, that's a, that's your whole process. Like, how did you get there? Right. So you were at this place where you had gotten to the size zero finally, and like, before you entered into recovery, what were you feeling then? Like, what was like, where were you mentally, physically, emotionally that, you know, before going into recovery, you know, what led you into deciding like, okay, like I have a problem. I need to go all in. So actually what happened to me was when I, I moved abroad for university and like, so I started living alone and like university is like the place for like eating disorders. Like people would not eat the, my friends would not eat the entire day to drink at night. And like, I would do that too. And they would have the excuse that like, I'd get drunk faster, but like, no, it it wasn't. It was because like the drinks have like a sweet, it's sugar. So like, I just won't eat the entire day. So like I started doing that and like, I stopped eating a lot at the end of the day because I was drinking Yeah, and like I had lots of schoolwork. So I'd like not remember to eat, Mm -hmm. but like, and so I stopped like so now I was like going like on like 600 
calories a day and like I was exercising for three hours a day I would not I would be standing the entire day like I would not let myself sit there was like an entire year which only the only time I would sit is when I was like about to go to bed like I would stand and do my classes because yeah. class went online the past year I would stand and do my classes I would not sit down in the train or the bus I would stand mm-hmm. and like oh my god yeah so that's when it got really bad was when I was no longer like eating lots I was exercising I was walking around 20,000 steps a day that was not that was not including like the three hours of exercise not eating and then what happened worse was that I saw myself losing the weight and it was like finally after all these years I was like yeah my issue was that I was living at home and there was too much food at home Mm -hmm. that was my excuse I was like now that I'm alone I have control over everything I eat everything I put in my body and like I was like yeah this is what I have to do so like I stopped eating meat milk um what else like I stopped everything nuts oil everything was stopped my diet included for like an entire year it was bread for breakfast one toast and then I would have a fruit I remember once I was so hungry and I wanted to eat an orange and like in my mind I was like I'm only allowed to eat an orange because it was the middle of the day and I was so hungry but I debated with myself for an hour if I should eat an orange (laughs) like I think back on this now and it's like what was I thinking but in that moment I was like if I eat an orange I'm a failure in life because I'm going to get back to the size what I was and I will no longer have my size zero. That was the entire thing that went on in my mind. Yeah, that's over an orange. Like, yeah. Orange. And like, I had just worked out for like two hours. I just wanted food. <laughs> and like, yeah, I would like debate it for an entire hour for eat, to eat an orange. And yeah, that's how like the weight started going down. And everyone was like, oh my God, you look so good. Right. and you should never comment on anyone's weight and like now I've learned it and like before I used to never like even before when I was like deep into the eating disorder mentally sometimes I think like oh my god she's lost weight she's gone she's gained weight but like I'd never like say it to the person but right. now I would never even think about it I would never say it because like when I was losing weight I was dying and when yeah. I was when I was like gained 100 pounds during recovery I was like actually trying to recover and like no one knows what's going on right yeah yeah I mean it's crazy that we go to these links right we would rather be small than be fed and have freedom and our life and our sanity and so some of those reasons like I remember you know, when we were talking, you said a lot of it had to do with wanting to be sexy for male attention, right? So, and I think that so many people can relate to this. I think like this is one of the biggest drivers, right? Like instinctually, like they, the diet culture played on that, like, oh, to attract a mate, to procreate kind of. So in our mind, then we see, okay, this ideal is what I have to do to be sexy to get a mate or get my current partner to not leave me and abandon me and then risk survival whatever so anyways long story short like could you explain a little bit of that because I think so many people could resonate with that oh my god that was the main thing of like why I decided to recover and first why I started like eating this like I mainly started because I wanted to get the male attention I wanted a boyfriend but now if you have like now if I think about it like a boyfriend would love you no matter what right like obviously like someone who actually loves you would not care if you gain weight you lose weight does not care but like in my mind I was like I don't have a boyfriend right now is because I am this size I will get a boyfriend when I am a size zero that was my main thing and especially when I was in university like I would see all these girls with boyfriends and I would be like oh my god she has a boyfriend because she is a smaller size like my entire thing was to be sexy for guys and like when every time like a guy would not like like me 
it had nothing like right now I like look back and it had nothing to do with my weight at all but I would be like okay it's because I am fat that's why he does not want me yeah I'd be like okay yeah now that I am at a size zero so once I finally was able to get to a size zero first of all I had no I like I did not want men because emotionally I was gone mentally I was depressed I was suicidal and like I was finally getting the male attention like from Mm -hmm. outside if you like if like nine-year-old me would have seen me at my size zero from outside you she would think like I was living my best life like I was a size zero I had the male attention I was finally able to wear the clothes I wasn't allowed to wear like I would tell myself like you can't wear shorts unless you're a size zero I'm not allowed to wear a dress unless I'm a size zero and like yeah I was wearing that and like from the outside like I was getting all the male attention everyone was like oh my god you look so sexy and like yeah and I was getting the male attention and like I was do I was like it was a a one thing like I was getting the male attention but then from the inside I was depressed I was suicidal and I wanted to literally blow my brains off like I had no will to survive I would come back home and I would sit in my bed like when I was finally allowed to sit (laughs) and like I would just think I have nothing to look forward to in life like I was 21 years old I had nothing to look forward to I was doing my master's like I was smart and I was like I have nothing going on for me like Mm -hmm. I don't know why I just felt like dying but like now I look at look back and it's because like I was only allowed to eat an orange that's why I felt like dying but like at that point I couldn't figure out like I had everything I wanted but like why was I so sad Mm -hmm. like I just like I did all this and then it's when I realized like I'm so uncomfortable and I'm doing this for other people like when people who starve themselves like they are not happy they do it for like other people for other guys to get attention Mm -hmm. and like once you realize it's like why are you doing this for other people like the guys don't care the guys aren't starving themselves like why are we doing this for what so like you can get male attention on the road like walking by like the guy will look at you and like now it's like it's complete like that's why I was about to die is because I wanted men to look at me Mm. and like now when I look back I'm like what was I think like I wanted a boyfriend like (laughs) a boyfriend would love you no matter what and like the guys who were giving me attention they did not care about me they would have sex with me once and like dump me like I was nothing and to get that one man's attention I was not eating I was starving myself I was not allowed to sit down I was like again I was about to blow my brains off and like god and once you like realize like I've reached a point where I'm like I do not care like at all what people think about how I look like once you reach that point where it's like I don't care about my weight I just want to be happy Mm. that's like that's when I was like I look back and now I'm like yeah I was doing that for some men I didn't even know who didn't even want me for like me just because of my size like Mm. yeah 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 I mean that's always the biggest question is like you can some people think that they're not doing it for others but it's like if you were on a private island by yourself never you're never going to see human beings again like would you be doing this you know if if others opinions didn't matter what would you be doing you know and typically it's like like you don't do this unless there's some thing outside of you you know and so that was so big for me is because I I had to be honest with myself and ask that because for so long I was like, no, you know, like I'm just doing this for myself, you know, but anyways, yeah. So asking that question is so important for a lot of people to realize that. And then, so after you were able to do that, you know, when you were deciding to go all in, like how, 
how did you get over that fear? Because sometimes people allow that fear to prevent them from going all in because of the fear of, well, what will people think of me? Will I lose my partner? Will I lose that attention from the guy on the street? Like, will, like all of these fears, like the what if. So how were you able to let go of that to be able to go all in and really commit and do what it takes? So okay. yeah. So what happened for me was that when I finally decided to like, so what happened to me actually when I decided to like recover was that I slowly, like it was getting so hard for me to starve myself. Like it was getting harder and harder. Like it was about like a year where I was like complete, like only 600 calories a day. And like, I remember it was like August last year where it was getting harder and harder for me to starve myself. So like, and I was finally like, I was getting like a brain babe. I was like, okay, maybe I'm not eating enough. Like 600 calories is not enough. Like suddenly I was like, maybe I might feel better. Maybe I'll stop being depressed if I eat like a bit more. But I was still like, I want to be a size zero. Like I would just like a bit, like maybe I'll increase like a piece of bread. Yeah, yeah. So. I started doing that and like one bread and then I realized I was getting more hungry mm. which like I wasn't hungry the entire year and I would like distract myself when I was hungry like I'd message boys when I was hungry because I was like okay if he replies to me he only likes me if I'm a size zero so like I can't eat so like it's like I wouldn't eat but like it got harder and harder so that's when I started I was like Okay, and by this point, I was no nuts, no dairy, no meat, no eggs, nothing. Like, like I would eat beans. <laughs> that was all I was allowed to eat. And like, slowly, I was like, yeah, let me introduce eggs back. So for about like a month, I started like increasing my food a bit. Like, I would increase eggs, but it wasn't fried. It was like, I had to make it like heated up in the in the microwave because I was like I could not add any oil to it oh, so, yeah. like I'm gonna heat it up in the microwave and like scrape it out the bowl and <laughs> eat it because no oil and like yeah so slowly I started increasing my food but then I realized my weight started gaining so fast mm -hmm. and like I was barely eating like three four hundred extra calories a day but like all of a sudden my size zero wasn't fitting me and the thing was, once I started eating, I couldn't stop. Like I could not go back to the one piece of bread. And then I slowly, I started like, it got more uncomfortable to eat like a bit more. Yeah. And like slowly, the un like I was reaching a point where I was like, I can't distract myself anymore. And like at this point, I didn't actually know what extreme hunger is. Because like if you're not actively like looking at recovery on yeah. online, like, I didn't know extreme hunger even exists. I didn't think it was possible to eat so much. Yeah. So, like, I remember I told myself one day, I was, like, I was just, like, so exhausted for, like, not eating what I wanted for 12 years. I was, like, I'm going to go to the store and let myself, only this one time, I was, like, I'll give myself a break. Let mm -hmm. me just buy whatever I want to buy. Mm -hmm. And this one, I filled up the entire trolley with, like, ice cream, and chocolate bars which like obviously I hadn't eaten in like a year and like all the fried food and like I came home and I just ate the entire thing like 500 dollars worth of groceries yeah. just ate it in a day and yeah. I was like and what I told myself was like okay it's a break and tomorrow I'll go back to normal mm -hmm. but I did the same thing the next day like I was hungry and I was shocked that I was still hungry the next day yeah and like, that's when I like went online. I was like, what, what is happening to me? Like I went on Google. I was like, why am I eating like 8,000 calories in <laughs> one thing? And then that's how I like found you. And like, I found your book and I remember reading your book. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember you said like, when you like start recovery, it's like, you don't want to go out. You don't want to meet anyone. Mm -hmm. And that was what happened to me also is that the weight started gaining and I felt like a complete failure in life yeah like I was like I am not myself and I was like I could not eat so what happened to me was like I stopped leaving the house mm -hmm. 
and like I just wanted to eat I did not care about any guy I didn't care about anyone and like I couldn't leave the house because all my clothes were also a size zero and Mm -hmm. like I couldn't fit into any of my clothes and like for like the initial period I was just like I was at home and I was eating Mm -hmm. and like I did not care about men at all and I feel like that's what happens in the beginning of recovery is that you're so focused on the food like nothing else really matters yeah. it's like I didn't care about going out I didn't care about boys I didn't care about anything for like an entire month I just ate and I didn't leave my house but it's like after that is like when the food becomes like kind of normal like yeah. when you're like allowed to eat that's when you like that's when I started using my brain and I was like holy okay I'm 21 years old I don't fit into any of my clothes I have no energy to leave the house no one is even looking at me anymore like I would go for a walk sometimes and like I would like mentally I was like I'm not sexy anymore like no one's looking at me Mm -hmm. I have gained all this weight and I was in sweatpants because obviously you can't wear jeans during recovery yeah (laughs) does not happen I was I was in pain yeah and like yeah that's when like I got stressed also and I was like for me the main thing was like I'm 21 years old I should be living like my best life going out like going to bars wearing like mini skirts short skirts and like going out and like just living my life but I was at home I couldn't stop eating and I had gained I gained about like 100 pounds in like three months and it was oh, it was like every single day I'd look at myself in the mirror and like I would not recognize myself my okay falling off can you say that again because a lot of people always tell me like okay I've gained this much is that normal like is that normal and it's like yeah like oh my god I was shocked I didn't think it was humanly (laughs) possible to gain a hundred pounds in three months but it happened and like oh my god okay and you were okay yeah and like I was not like like I was perfect I was exhausted like all the symptoms of recovery like my hair was falling off I was exhausted I think the edema yeah and like yeah I was just like I could not move like what's the one thing is like I had to like stop moving for like a few months and I feel like that also helped a lot but like also I could not move I was so exhausted from like 12 years of just like moving and like not able to like actually relax and sit down and just like eat in peace and yeah the 100 pounds of weight gain I feel like the weight gain is like the your worst fear because the reason you're starving yourself is to not gain weight and like once you let go it's like 100 pounds in three months it was shocking like I would see people like I hadn't left my house in like three months and like all of a sudden I'd see people and they'd be shocked and like that also kind of like affects you too yeah but like yeah it does and it's like when you like live if you live with someone I feel like you should tell them like I am going through recovery and I need to eat this much because sometimes like my mom would tell me like are you sure you want to eat ice cream in the middle of the day mm-hmm. and like First, I was eating like an entire one pint, one liter of ice cream as a snack every day, like for four months. It was like at least 9,000 calories a day. Yeah. And I could not not eat like, okay, now if I think about like I'm six months into recovery, like I don't feel the need to eat a liter of ice cream every day. Like I still eat ice cream every single day. Like sometimes it's a scoop, sometimes it's two scoops. Right. But like. If you like think about a normal person can't eat a liter of ice cream without puking, but like I was eating it and I was like, "Mm, I could go for something fried now. Yeah, yeah. I know. I think back to, to how much food I ate. Like I couldn't even imagine anymore, but like I could just keep eating and I don't know where it went. Like you see pictures of a stomach and it's like, I just ate like a ton truck worth and I don't know where it went. Like, oh my god recovery is yeah. oh yeah so yeah that's what like so yeah I started eating a bit like I started like increasing my food a bit and that got so uncomfortable and that's when I like my extreme hunger just like came on it came on so fast like I went from eating 600 calories to like 9,000 
in like a span of a week yeah and like the first um like I feel like most people go through it like the first week I was nauseous the entire time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's when you think it's like what's wrong with me like mentally I was starving but physically I was eating I was puking I was eating I was puking but like I could not eat because I was mentally so hungry mm-hmm. and I was like and it goes away like mine went away in like a week I was mm-hmm. I was like 100% fine like I was able to eat and I stopped puking but yeah oh yeah also and the one thing was like when I was like in my 600 calories when I would actually go out to eat with my friends I would come back and I would puke it out and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's yeah. also one thing when I realized like I have a problem is when I started puking mm-hmm. yeah I'm sure I don't know like maybe this is for you but I remember when I I entered into that too, like after my last bikini competition. And it's something that I never thought I would do because I was always the one that hated the stomach flu. Like I hated throwing up. And then lo and behold, there I am doing that because I'm afraid to gain any weight because I can't control my hunger, right? Like, did you feel like that too? Yes, because I remember a few times, like once a month I would binge in my like 600 calorie time but like I would binge but I would puke it out and like it seemed like when I was younger when you think of like someone someone with like an eating disorder you think like someone who like eats and pukes it out right yeah and I had told myself like I didn't have a problem because I I never puked like puking was like one other way of like one other extreme like I would exercise I would over exercise but puking was like out of question but I started doing that the past like the last few months like I would eat McDonald's I would go out with my friends and when I was out with my friends I'd be one of those girls who like I'll eat a mac chicken I'll eat fries I'll eat everything but like no one knew I was coming back and puking it yeah and that's when I knew I had a, like, that's when it started happening. And I was like, it's so normal for me to like eat and puke. And like, all of a sudden I was like, hmm, that's not fine at all. Uh, yeah. And so after that though, you kept going or is that when you found recovery? So I, that happened for like a few months. I, for me, the main reason, like I started recovery was that I couldn't not like it got harder to starve myself like it got so hard that I was sitting and I was so depressed I had no will to live and I'm actually like a quite like fun outgoing person and like the last few months I did not want to leave my house I didn't want to see anyone and like I was so depressed and I was like I'm 21 I have no will to live I have everything I ever wanted but like why am I so like this thing and like I thought to myself like For 12 years, I've had one goal to get to a size zero. Mm -hmm. I am a size zero. Like, Mm -hmm. like, what's going to happen now? Why am I so sad? Like, I am the most depressed I have ever been. Like, Mm -hmm. it was horrible. Like, suicidal, depressed, and like, no will to live at all. And that's when, like, I realized I was like, I need to eat. Yeah. And it's unfortunate because a lot of people that maybe never got to that place like they they didn't lose the weight ever maybe they lost like five to ten pounds but maybe they didn't get to the size two or zero or even four whatever their goal was you know and so they don't like they don't have that experience of getting to their goal weight their perfect body and experiencing that feeling of life's not perfect you know, so it's almost harder for them to, um, you know, let go of that, 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 that thin fantasy, right? Because they didn't experience that. Like you said, like you wished you wouldn't have gotten to that point, but sometimes some people have to get to that point, unfortunately, but it's so, it's just terrible, right? That's what we've been taught that perfect body equals perfect life. And it just is not true. It's not like I wasted eight years of my life and it's not easy to reach a size zero when you're not meant to be a size zero like 
it's no reason like most people don't like most people say between like not eating and like eating lots at the end of the day like binge eating but like it's really hard to get to a size zero you need to stop binge eating you need to start puking you need to stop sitting down you need to yeah. eat orange a day and like it's not easy like I look back and like the amount of effort it took to reach a size zero like yeah. if I could just use the energy for something else right yeah I think to a size zero when you are not meant to be a size zero like I have a friend like she's a size zero but her shit I've never seen her not eat like yeah. if you are meant to be a size zero you will be a size zero but I was not meant to be a size zero and like yeah. the effort it takes that's why most people don't reach it like that's why when I see like my mom for example like she has these small like things where she weighs herself every day and like sometimes if she's feeling fat she won't eat bread or she'll yeah. skip a meal but, like her weight is like kind of stayed the same and like that's the thing is like she's trying to lose the last like five ten pounds and like it never goes away because you're you it adjusts to your body like you know yeah. metabolism will go down you like end up binge eating that same day Yep. So like, yeah, you, your weight will always rem remain this like about the same, but like to starve yourself to reach to a size zero, it, the amount of work it takes. Yeah. Yeah. It's a waste of time and energy. You could be doing so many other things, right? But it's just getting over that fear of weight gain and fear of loss of love and all of those things. So, okay. You were able to do that to get into recovery. Okay, so you're six months in, how were you able to sustain that, right? Because that that's when it gets hard and where people can fall into quasi recovery is like, okay, maybe now they're better, right? Like extreme hunger has died down, they've gotten their period back, but they're not fully recovered. They're not fully free. Like how, and then that's when they maybe start dabbling in restriction again or start upping the exercise, right? So yeah, like what did you do? did you struggle with that first of all and then so, what did you do? yeah so like I feel like right now I can say like I'm recovered not because of my weight because my weight is probably still the same as when I gained 100 pounds like I don't care about my weight I don't care like overshoot like I don't even think about it and overshoot like I saw your YouTube videos like not even think about your weight and like overshoot and just start living your life and like that's what I've started doing is like that's why now I can kind of say like I am recovered and before I used to think like when you're recovered it's like you've lost your overshoot weight and you're back to eating like a normal diet that's what that's these were the two things like I had mentally was like when I started recovery I was like I can say I'm recovered when I get back to a normal size like what I thought was a normal size like when I can finally eat like a normal diet which I thought was still like a pretty healthy like a healthy diet but like now like my diet is like whatever I want to eat and like I don't worry about my weight and to reach this point oh it takes a lot of work like so when I first started, obviously, like the first two months was just like food filled. Like I did not care about anything because like you're finally getting to eat. And like the first two months for me was just like food, 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 like eating a pint of ice cream like as a snack. That was like after breakfast, which was like eight bagels and like 12 eggs, which, by the way, I was going to say this, but like in when you start recovery, um, you want specific foods and I realized like eggs was like the number one thing I wanted yeah. me too that's weird yeah right like I just I was eating 12 eggs a day and like I just like the egg yolk and it was just like so yummy like yeah. eggs milk and like I wanted all these high fat foods and like yeah. I was having McDonald's every single day yeah like I did not want normal food at yeah. all for like three months, I didn't eat a fruit. I didn't eat a vegetable. It was all like whatever, like candy bars, chocolate, McDonald's, pizza, yeah. everything like that. So yeah, that's how it started for like two months. And for me, what happened after two months was that I started like wondering like what's happening. Like I've gained all the weight. My extreme hunger isn't, isn't ending, which like I used to go online and I used to look for like 
like blogs online being like when people were talking about their extreme hunger and they'd be like yeah my extreme hunger lasted for a week and I was like it's been two months for me yeah. and I don't think I could ever go back to normal like I saw no light at the end of the tunnel mm -hmm. yeah so two months in it was like bad because like I was kind of getting sad again because I was like I didn't have any motivation to leave the house because yeah. also I had no energy to leave the house right and yeah. then I was like, I'm not getting any male attention. So like my first instinct was like, okay, maybe I'll start exercising. Mm -hmm. And I tried jumping. I literally tried jumping and I was in so much pain. <laughs> like I remember trying to like do a squat and I was like, yeah, no, like it was not happening. So like there was like a point in two months when like I actually, you start looking at what's like, once the food fog goes away, Yeah. And it's like, yeah, okay, what am I doing in life? Because like, I saw no light at the end of the tunnel. And I did try to restrict again. But this time, mentally, I was like, I won't go back to 600 calories, I'll go to like, 1500 calories, which is still <laughs> restricting. But like, I was mentally, I was like, if I do 1500 calories for like a couple of months, I'll get back to like a size six, maybe, which I was like, maybe that's too fat. But like, maybe like I'd be fine with a size six I I was like rationing this with myself and I was like and I tell myself um okay breakfast I'll eat like a normal breakfast which is like what my I thought was like two eggs two toast mm -hmm. I'd eat my two eggs two toast and I was like that didn't even make a dent like yeah. I am so hungry like yeah. I would sit and I would look at the fridge I'd be like should I eat should I not eat mm -hmm. And that happened, so that happened two months in and like that lasted for like a day. Oh, really? Okay. A day, I could not, by the end of the day, I was like, I'm done. Like, I cannot do this anymore. And I just sit and I'd sit on my bed and I just cry because I was exhausted. Like for 12 years of my life, I tried everything mm -hmm. and like, I haven't been able to eat. And like, it was horrible. And I was just like, I give up. I had no energy. And that's kind of what happened to me is like, I just didn't have any energy to starve myself anymore. And I reached a point where I was like, I don't care if I don't have a boyfriend ever in my entire life. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I do not care. I don't need a man to do anything. Yeah. And I like, one day, right. I was like, I was like yeah. so exhausted trying to get like male attention. And I was like, yeah. I am done like I don't care I chopped all my hair off because it meant I was like <laughs> long hair um I don't need it anymore I'm gonna look like a boy now <laughs> I was just like I gave up I chopped off all my hair I'd gained all the weight and I just like reached like the bottom and I was like I do not care anymore like mm -hmm. yeah it was just so bad and I saw no light at the end of the tunnel like I was like maybe I'll live the rest of my life in extreme hunger I was like I'd rather die eating too much like at some points I'd be eating so much that I was like I'm gonna burst yeah but I was like I'd rather die like with too much food than like ever starve myself and die yeah yeah so that happened two months in and then actually what happened was that I was in I was still in lab and so what happened was like I was not, I had no access to food. Like I was not at home to like be able to go and eat mm -hmm. when I wanted to like the fridge, like just walk into my kitchen and get something from the fridge. I was in lab and like the, it was so hard because like I had to take all my food with me for the entire day to lab. Yeah. And like, it was a backpack full of food. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was like an extreme hunger, full day amount of food. And that got so hard. Yeah, how did that even fit in a backpack? <laughs> and, like I'd have like a backpack full of food plus two bags filled with like just chocolate. Oh and I gosh. was getting no work done because I was eating the entire day. And I remember I just, I cried to my mom one day on the phone. I was like, I can't do it anymore. Like it was too exhausting, like yeah. standing up in lab. Mm -hmm. And like, I remember reading in your book, it's like just a few, a short amount of your time for recovery. If you just like, focus on recovery you have the rest of your life but like my entire life I've been like go 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 like taking a break was like not an option yeah. at all yeah and like people don't realize it but you need the break like standing is 
like some from coming from like walking 20,000 steps a day to like not being able to move it was horrible so like I called my mom up and I started crying I was like I can't do it anymore I can't be in lab I can't see people because like it's too exhausting like trying to cook like trying to cook an entire day's worth of extreme hunger food and like boxing it up and keeping it in my bag was like so much work that I decided to go home for a few months and what happened for me was that I was at home. I didn't, I didn't know anyone. And it was like lockdown, which was like lucky for me. So like I wasn't seeing anyone. Yeah. And in that two months, what actually happened was like, I think I recovered in that two months because I wasn't moving anymore because I didn't have to cook my own food. Yeah. Like I would yell, I'd be like, mom, I'm hungry. And like she'd come running with food. So like I didn't even have to cook. Yeah. I had didn't have to stand up at all and I was relaxing and sleeping like the entire day and just eating yeah in that two months I don't know what happened but like I came back home like I came back to lab and all and I was like I'm fine like my extreme hunger kind of died down Mm -hmm. but like mentally I was like I needed that break to realize that my entire life's purpose is not to get someone's attention Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like my life's purpose is not to reach a size zero so everyone else can be happy like yeah yeah and so how did you get to that point like what did you do right did you do like specific work or was it just a lot of like really questioning everything and contemplating and just going deep it was questioning everything and also it was like so what I did was I was uncomfortable even at a size zero I was uncomfortable even 100 pounds heavier but the thing is that 100 pounds heavier I was actually kind of happier mm-hmm. but the thing is like extreme hunger and recovery is like it's like it's not easy like you have to yeah. sit through all the uncomfort like like 12 years of my life I was trying to get men's approval and all of a sudden like not wondering like not have not wanting them to look like I had to reach a point where I'm like I do not care if they look at me mm-hmm. and I was sitting like the two months sitting at home I was like why am I doing all this mm-hmm. like you start to question it like I'm trying to like and I also like as I said before I was like I want a boyfriend I just didn't want random men but mm-hmm. a boyfriend would love you no matter what right mm-hmm. and like, oh go ahead yeah I'll, I'll yeah see. so I was like I realized this and I was like sitting down too much with the uncomfort and like everything like not wanting to like leave the house and like I also realized my friends the people who actually loved me they were my friends at a size zero and they were my friends at a higher size also like my friends yeah. who actually loved me that did not change at all yeah it was like I'm just I was done like <laughs> yeah yeah, that's what it takes. You have to get to that place where you are done and you are exhausted and you are not going to spend another day of your life living the way you've been living, right? That's what it takes. And so really quickly, like what you said about, you know, like if I got a boyfriend, then, you know, they would love me. Like that's what boyfriends do, you know? And so on the flip side, there's a lot of people that I just want to bring this up because I know so many people that will do this to keep their partner thinking, oh, if I just get skinnier, maybe I'll get his attention finally, right? Because maybe he's cheating on her or he's betrayed her or, you know, any of that kind of stuff or going through a divorce, he wants to divorce her. And so he, she thinks, if I just lose the weight, if I become the size zero, if I just get boobs, if I just get a butt and a small waist, then I'll keep them, right? So there's so much of that too. It's kind of like the thin fantasy. Oh, if I get to a size zero, then I'll be happy. Or if I get to a size two, then my partner won't cheat on me. But that's the biggest thing. Like even I had to realize is Like, I thought that's what would keep the partner around. But even then, like, that doesn't guarantee it. Like, and I remember looking at different stars that I idolized, right? The most beautiful women. And it's like, they were being cheated on and betrayed. And I was like, see, like, you, you can be the most ideal 
of our world and still like you can't like that doesn't guarantee you're safe or loved you know like so. everyone is just so obsessed with their body and every yeah. like most people think if you're a size zero like everyone has a thing if you're a size zero you will get the perfect man yeah but perfect man like most men they don't care they will cheat on you whether you're a size 12 yeah. whether you're a size six whether you're a size zero like one like if they want to cheat your weight does not matter at all yeah like also what I realized what helped me also realize was that I had a um, friend who I really like like a guy friend and mm-hmm. when I was a heavier size he didn't like me mm-hmm. like so we were just friends and mentally I was like once I get to a size zero mm-hmm. I will be more attractive and yeah. like he would find like me and so I got to a size zero but our friendship it did not change at all like we were still the same at a size zero uh, yeah like Hmm, if he liked me he would have liked me at any size but he didn't like me so like being a size zero didn't help at all yeah at all and like I don't know it's just so happened like being uncomfortable with food is so normal for people yeah oh yeah it's in our culture right just like you have to I love this quote that I I wanted to read it that you wrote in your email where I wrote it down. You said, like, I thought if you weren't actively trying to lose weight, like, what are you even doing? <laughs> I thought that was so funny. Right? Like, everyone yeah. is trying to lose weight. Like, everyone is trying to either maintain their weight by, like, not eating yeah. or eating less and, like, trying to lose weight. Like, out of all my friends, I feel like I'm the only one out of, like, my 15 friends I have. Yeah. But, like, I'm the only one who actually, like, does not care like Mm -hmm. about food about my weight at all and that's only because I've reached this point after like 12 years of an eating disorder yeah but it's so normal to like lose wanting to lose weight Mm -hmm. and like before like if you get married before you're trying to get married everyone's like oh my god you need to like fit into your dress lose weight everything always somehow ends up back at your weight if someone if your boyfriend leaves you it's like oh my god it's because I was too fat it's not yeah yep and then being uncomfortable around food is just like I look at people and I'm like why like I was that uncomfortable before too like I was not allowed to just eat Mm -hmm. like just eat and move on like eating just because you're hungry and like you're done like eating before for me was either like I was eating a salad because that was the only food I was allowed or I was eating like every single thing in the house because I was going on a diet the next day. Like mm-hmm. I would tell myself, I'm giving myself like a hundred day diet. Mm-hmm. With a like hundred days, I don't eat any junk food. And I was like, once I finally reach this weight, I will eat a candy bar. Mm-hmm. I would buy clothes that are way too small for me. I would hang it up, keep it in front of me. And like, I'd be like, I'd eat in front of it being like I'd eat less if I look at it like it's and it's so normal like who wasn't doing this like I oh that just brought up something I remember when I was younger I can't remember what age but it was in the midst of this all and I remember hearing again some like actress that I uh, looked up to that was like a role model and that's what she said she's like you know when you get really hungry or something like, I'm going to butcher this, but she said something like, when you're feeling really hungry, just go sit naked in front of the mirror while you're eating that food so that you can see like, you shouldn't be eating that food. Just look at yourself and point out your flaws and how much weight you need to lose. And then you won't want to eat the food. And I remember trying that and I was like, but I'm so hungry, you know? (laughs) And that went, that went along with the quote, like, uh, being skinny wait no food tastes as good as skinny feels and I remember trying to think about that when I was like eating and binging and I'm like but this does taste so good like this does (laughs) right (laughs) Right? when you're hungry like it doesn't matter like at all like I would I would read magazines and I'd read articles where the person on the magazine was like I ate only seven almonds a day to reach this size and I was like okay I'm gonna try that (laughs) it's crazy yeah 
don't understand like it's just so normal to be uncomfortable around food and like yeah. on the media everywhere it's like to attain that size zero actress figure and it's always the size zero actress that gets the boy like yeah yep there and like you said you know just the more that people come to this the more that people empower themselves and recover the more that this will become more normalized so right yeah so that's more goal. and more people like that's why i wanted to do this is because there should be more and more people saying that you do not have to spend the rest of your life being uncomfortable around food like food yeah. is not the enemy you want a brownie eat the brownie you want 10 pieces of brownie just eat it and be done like yeah and it you won't die the world doesn't end you don't like that's the biggest fear right you just don't keep gaining and gaining and gaining forever like it stops you don't keep eating and eating forever that dies down like it, it it's gonna be okay that's the biggest fear you know like everyone's biggest fear when you starve yourself is to gain weight and that was my biggest fear i gained 100 pounds in three months i'm alive yeah. I'm six months later, I'm over here talking like and saying I'm completely recovered. And it's yeah. not because I've lost a hundred pounds. It's because like yeah. I eat freely. Like I do not care about my weight. I do not care about my food. Like I finally started incorporating like fruits and vegetables in after like six months. But like, that's when I feel like it. Right. And I can right. stay recovered yeah. because when I want McDonald's, I just eat the McDonald's. Right. And you're not, so you're not in this place to like, where you're in this quasi recovery where you're like, well, I should eat the vegetables because that's the better thing to do. And I don't want to gain any more weight because blah, blah, blah. You know, there's none of that going on. It's just like, mm, I want a cucumber right now. I'm going to eat the cucumber. But if I want the M&M after, I'm going to have the M&Ms, right? So, I mean, that's where so many people get stuck is that quasi recovery because they draw that line in the sand where they're like, all right, I'll recover but only this much like if I go over this line then that's too much okay. and yeah and then they wonder why it's not working for them but it's because you know it, it's the people that's why you know going all in all the way that's why it's so important because that's the only way to true freedom you it know is. because I remember you said that you were in in that recovery for like a year Mm -hmm. and like you were going back and forth and yep. whereas for me like the back and forth was like just a day because like I couldn't I was so uncomfortable eating like for example I told myself I was like I'll eat ice cream but I'll only eat a scoop because that's what normal people eat right and I ate the scoop and I was just so uncomfortable like yep. I had to eat the entire one liter to be like okay I'm good um I'm full now and I can move on and that's why I feel like I feel like the sooner you go all in is the sooner you recover. Like I'm six months in and I can say I'm recovered because I ate the one liter of ice cream when I wanted to. Right. And there was something that you said like a while ago, I think, I think it was the last time we talked and you said, you know, I just didn't understand. Like if I just ate a little bit more then that switch flips in my brain. But I always was judging, right? Like, oh, this is too much. But if I just ate that little bit more, like the switch flips and I'm satisfied, you know? Mental hunger. Like I didn't even know mental hunger exist before like I started like actually recovering. And like, like I would eat like an entire like loaf of bread and like in my stomach, I was about to like, I was about to burst. But mentally I was like, mm, I could go for like another like loaf. Yeah. And like, I, and I'd start eating it. And then after like two, three more slices of bread, I'd be like, hmm, I'm good. I'm comfortable. But like, yeah. unless you eat that extra two, three slices of bread mentally, it right. is so uncomfortable. Like in your, in my mind, I'm like, oh, I want Nutella. Oh, I want peanut butter. Oh, I want this. Oh, I want that. And I just like eat it. Yeah. Yeah. It's just off. Like, it's like a switch in my brain, which like, you like people, like people going through like extreme hunger, like they realize it. And like, it's just a switch, it switches off. And once like, sometimes like I ate a spoon of Nutella and I'm like, hmm, okay, I'm good. Yeah. Like right. sometimes all you need is just a spoon to like switch off the switch. But if you don't, <laughs> you stay, it's so uncomfortable. I couldn't focus on anything else. Mm -hmm. like, right. I had no option but to eat it. Like initially I was like, I've already eaten like eight eggs. Why, why should I eat more? Like, 
and extreme hunger there's no amount of normal food like what you think is normal is like throw it out like right yeah and that's where you know so many people get caught up on is that judgment and that line in the sand they're like okay now i'll eat eight eggs but nine eggs that's just ridiculous you know and so it's that line like you have to step over the line in the sand that you've drawn for yourself like everyone draws a certain line so whatever that is like that's the only way you have to release that judgment yeah like, you have to because like you'll never recover if you don't eat the extra egg like honestly <laughs> like you will, you'll never like once you like get past that like now what i'm eating is completely different from what i thought was normal eating like for me initially what i thought was normal eating when i started recovery and what i thought when you're recovered you eat normally is like you have breakfast lunch dinner and like in the middle you kind of have like a fruit for snack if yeah. you want if you don't want now it's like i don't look at the clock when i eat at all that's one thing like i had to do was like stop looking at the time because in my mind first of all when i was like in, in like the eating disorder thing i was like i can't eat if it's like less than like four hours Mm -hmm. like I the gap for four hours so one thing you need to like stop looking at the clock you need to stop focusing on what you eat like yeah. I just like if I want Nutella I go and I eat the Nutella and I always had the food in the house which one thing like I was I was never allowed to do before like if I have it in the house I'd eat it that's like everyone's mentality like if I have the like brownie at home I'd eat the brownie but now I have the brownie at home I eat the brownie when I want it and it's done. Right. Yeah. So many people that feel that way. And I remember feeling that way. And you think like, that's just a part of life. Right. But you get to a point where you could have all of those foods stocked in your pantry and right. Like you could be home studying or just relaxing at home and it, the food no longer is tempting or calling your name like you don't feel like you have to keep going back to the pantry anymore that goes away that does like honest to god like once you go all in and the worst thing about recovery is that you don't know when it's going to end extreme hunger and that's like people like get stressed out because they're like what am i going to eat until i die because like you don't stop eating yeah which like no one can really say how long it's going to last right because some people it lasts for a week some people it lasts for like a year and like that's the worst part but you just have to trust like yeah. you've tried everything else nothing else worked you're so unhappy in life that you finally like if people are watching this they've like finally reached your page that means they've gone online they've been like how do i like recover yeah. so you just have to like reached a point where it's like nothing else has worked like you know you have to eat and ultimately at the end of the day to be recovered is you have to listen to your hunger and eat and then extreme hunger like mentally you're like oh my god this is too much but you're actually listening to your body and yeah. like yeah exactly yep if more people could just you know do that and then talk about it that's why i love like you know, that you came on. And the more people that talk about this, then the more it's normalized, the diversity, I guess, of recovery, um, because every story looks different. Like no story looks the same, you know? And so many people get caught up with comparing their journey like they did in the diet mentality. They compared their bodies and their life and what they're doing. And then in recovery, that same mindset is like, well, this person it only lasts this long well, this person only gained this much this person you know so i'd look online i'd be like this person only gained like 18 pounds like i'd read blogs and i was like well i'm 80 pounds plus <laughs> and like i'd go online and be like no one has ever gained this much weight so fast but like now i'm here to tell you you can gain this much weight and you can gain even more like right there's no stopping like I don't even know I, I stopped looking at it like after like the 100 pounds I was like I'm good I don't yeah. need to see it anymore and like right. I don't know like I don't care about my weight anymore I don't care if I've lost if I've gained at all I just like listen to my body eat when I'm hungry and I stop when I'm full and I have chips in my house I have brownies I have chocolate I have ice cream and like I have lots of eggs and like <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm just like yeah. I eat it when I'm hungry and I don't look at the clock and like I just don't judge what I eat because sometimes in the middle of the day I want to eat ice cream yeah just eat it yeah exactly and you move on and then you don't keep thinking about ice cream that's 
the point, you yeah, know? The only way you stop thinking about the ice cream is if you eat the ice cream. Right. Like now I don't need to eat the liter, but sometimes if I'm like really hungry, if I've had an active day, like I want to eat two scoops, three scoops. I just eat it and move on. Yeah, yeah. And to really quickly, like some people may think in their mind, like, well, you know, I'm starting recovery at a normal weight. I didn't get to the size zero when I started recovery or I, you know, am at a higher weight, you know, and I just want to speak to that because like you can still gain a lot of weight at, you know, not coming into recovery at a low weight, you know, you could gain more or less even. It's just, that's just part of the process is to gain weight and to gain a lot of it. And typically, and gaining as much as your body wants to gain wherever you're starting, you know, because yeah, it's just, it's not a thing of, I hear this sometimes with people like, well, maybe I'll go lose weight first and then come to recovery. I'm like, no, you're going to make it, you're going to have to gain more weight than, you know, it's, right? yeah. So. I would have started when I was like at my normal weight. I don't think I would have gained hundred pounds in three months, yeah. but I was coming from 600 calories a day, all bones. That's why I gained so fast. Cause like, if you think about hundred pounds in three months, like the when you do the math for like the food and all, I don't think I was eating that much, but it, you gain, the more you starve yourself, the more you gain. Like, and, and at the end of the day, you're always going to eat. You're always going to end up like eating lots. Like you have to recover at some point if you want to actually have a life free of like, yeah. we're not being obsessed with food all the time. So you have to recover and you have to let go of the weight. Like that's the main thing is like, once you let go of the whole weight thing, it's like, yeah, I don't care if men find me attractive or not. I'm happy at my own weight. And if they do find me attractive at the weight I am or which I will go, I don't know. It's like, yeah, like I'm just like, once you let go of the weight, like it takes a lot of work. Cause like for 12 years, I was obsessed with being a size zero and now I'm definitely not a size zero. And like trying to like let go of the fact that my entire life doesn't revolve around losing weight. Mm -hmm weight like if you just let go of that extreme hunger also becomes like easier because yeah. like obviously people are stressed with extreme hunger it's because of the weight gain not because of the food like yeah. if, for example if you were eating all the food and just like left your body they wouldn't be so stressed about extreme hunger like yeah. right yeah. i'd be like online trying to figure out when my extreme hunger would end because i was scared about the weight gain mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it takes so much work. Yeah. Like I think, you know, it's easy to compare of like, Oh, okay. Like you're here, like not to see the whole journey and all of the thoughts that you dealt with and the emotions and just on the daily, like all of the fears and the doubts and the, you know, judgments and all the things that you had to do to get to where you are, you know, it takes work. So lot of work because people will judge you no matter what size right. you are like even when I was like, I was like 100 pounds plus people would ask me like what's happening like are you pregnant people would ask me that because like it was a lot of weight but once you reach a point where you don't care anymore like people mm -hmm. will question my weight now also I'll be like yeah I just don't respond I'd see people in front of me like for example when I go out with my friends someone won't eat bread for example before it used to affect me like mm -hmm. if they're not eating bread why should I eat bread because yeah. I want to be their size so if they're not eating bread I should not also eat bread but now it doesn't affect me at all anymore like if I want the bread I just eat the bread I eat as, as much as I want yeah that's amazing yeah yep and so I mean you you've kind of like talked about some of the benefits right so what are like all like a synopsis what are some of the benefits that you've received from going through a full recovery process you know like how has your life improved it's so much like I got my life back I got myself back because the year I was like not eating I was like I was not myself I did not laugh for like an entire year like yeah. you talk about no emotions right and like I didn't realize it but now when I look back for an, an entire year I don't think I even cried like I was a walking zombie right yeah like, was horrible and now I'm back to myself again and like my hair started growing and these are like additional things but like mainly is like I can just eat when I want like I don't have to feel hungry and like 
feeling hungry is so uncomfortable and like I just like it's just when I'm like I don't reach the point where I'm like really hungry now it's like when I'm I feel slightly hungry or like right and I know I want like food I just eat the food but like just the freedom of not caring and it also comes mentally it's like I don't care how I look anymore like in terms of like my weight Mm -hmm. and that's been like so freeing is I don't care if someone wants to like talk about my weight let them talk like yeah. I do not care and it's it's freeing like once you get to the other side being able to just like eat what you want when you want and just like stopping mm -hmm. and like once the extreme hunger is done because like extreme hunger is uncomfortable <laughs> like you, yeah. you're 12 months pregnant and yeah. like energy exhausted yeah. my hair was falling so much yeah it was like coming out in clumps yeah like now I have my energy back yeah. and like I am free to do whatever I want I'm free to wear whatever clothes I want to wear is like I don't care about my size anymore like I can wear shorts whenever I want dresses whenever I want it's like it's freeing and like to be able to just like be myself the way I was meant to be and like just like letting my weight just be like yeah yeah free. and getting your period back and period yeah back so many things yeah, yeah. I lost mine for like six months and within wow. like a month and a half of being all in I after gaining also I gained like 85 pounds before I got my period back like in case like people are wondering like I gained 10 pounds it's not coming back like I had to gain 85 pounds yeah back. yeah I'm glad that you said that yeah. yeah there's no way like when you when your body feels it's ready and this was around the time also when I was like okay with food like I was just, I was trying to feel like food wasn't revolving my life anymore mm -hmm. like around like the one and a half two month mark where like I wasn't I was quite hungry but like it wasn't like I was eating like it's my last meal of the of yeah. like my entire life like I had reached a point where like the weight was kind of staying the same Mm -hmm. it increase like it was increasing a bit slower mm -hmm. but like yeah that's like two month mark and it came back and that's when I started seeing like the effects like I, I was happier when I got my period back and like my hair stopped falling off mm -hmm. and like my hunger also a bit like it's it started like uh, leveling out a bit mm -hmm. like after I got my period back but to get their period back you need to go through like the yeah the, I had to go through the 85 pound um, weight gain. And after you got your period back, recovery wasn't over, right? Oh, no. I tried exercising again, like, yeah. a couple of times. And I tried to squat. Like, it wasn't happening. Like, with yeah. the exhaustion and the edema, like, you, you cannot exercise. Like, yeah. I could not physically exercise. But, like, for me, like, after a few months, like, you kind of get your energy back. And, like, it happens slowly. Yeah. And like, like now I look back to like a few months back and I didn't think I'd ever be at this point right now talking to you about this. Like I was still deep in, yeah. but like slowly, like day by day, you look back and it's like, hmm, okay. I went out to eat with my friends and I didn't look at other people's food. Yeah. I didn't judge as much as they're eating. And you come back and you're like, hmm, this is interesting because like, I've never done this before. I always used to go out and eat, either puke it out when I come back or like I'd overexercise or I'd always judge what other people are eating. But like yeah. I was just able to enjoy my time out. And like these small things happen. Mm -hmm. And you're like, hmm, I went out, I was able to dress in whatever I wanted to wear. And I didn't think about my weight even once. It's like yeah. slowly these things happen. And then now I look back like a few months back and I'm like, wow, like I actually was making progress. But when you're in it, mm -hmm. it seems like it's never going to end yeah but you, just, you have to stick with it like right and remind yourself of the progress you know so many times I'll have to remind people like well look at what's happened like look at all these things and they're like oh yeah you know I'm so busy fixating on what I have to do and how miserable yeah. I feel that I didn't take time to realize like all of these things or remember you know you kind of feel it like oh I got my period back yay and then like a second later you're like oh my gosh I feel terrible in my body you know so yeah. 
no yeah it happened like I remember I spoke about this to, with you too like I was like I told you the stuff I was doing and you were like look at how much progress you made like but in the moment like after yeah. you have eaten a liter of ice cream for example like <laughs> You don't feel so good. Like you're like, how like how many more months or years do I have to go through this? And you have to know it'll end, but you don't know when it's gonna end, which is like the worst part. But like it's like you get your life back. Like if you just yeah. with it. And this is the right way. Like there's nothing wrong with listening to your body. This is how we were meant to live, but like it's all got drew. And like for me, it got drew and when I was nine years old, when like the dietitian told me to like eat one piece of toast for breakfast. Like if yeah. I would just let be like at nine, if I was just like, let be the obsession with food wouldn't have started. Yeah. Like I would have just been fine. Yeah. But it starts. And like, that's when it happened. You just have to like realize that it's, you just have to live your life and it'll happen. Like you will slowly look back. Like you won't be at the same place you are right now in a year. Mm -hmm. If you do everything, if you listen to your hunger, you don't exercise, you rest, you do the mental work of trying to deal with like your life goal isn't to get to a size zero. Mm -hmm. A year from now, you will not be at the same place, but like you have to stick with it. Every single day, you need to wake up and decide, okay, I am going to recover. Yeah. Some days are hard, like, eating is hard like when you're in extreme hunger and you're gaining weight and you're in recovery eating is hard because yeah it's fun eating but after you're done eating you just sit over there you're like oh my god did I just eat like 12 eggs yeah. you couldn't have not eaten the 12 eggs yeah yeah exactly it's yeah. really it's it's such a pickle you're like enjoying the food for the first time but then you're terrified of like the weight gain and what people are going to say and it, yeah it's just such a it's a battle and that's why yeah like you will get there in a year to a different completely different place maybe not even fully free but like completely different right. only if you do the work though like you said like the mental work is so important you can't just like eat and then not change your beliefs or your perspective or your mindsets. So, yeah. Right? Because in the beginning, I told myself, I was like, okay, I'm in extreme hunger, but I'll let myself be in extreme hunger for like a week maybe. And then in a week I'll stop. But that's not how it works. Like once you have to like do the work of like loving yourself and letting go yeah. of the weekend, like just be yourself. Like I finally reached a point where I'm like, I like myself no matter how much I weigh. And I have more things about me other than the way I look and my weight and what size clothes I wear. Like once you reach that point, like it takes a lot of work, but you're like once you reach that point where it's like, I've tried hating myself. I've tried starving. I've tried everything. Like I've tried getting male attention. That didn't even give me anything. Like I didn't feel any different. I was like, yeah, I'm getting the male attention, but like, I don't feel as good as I thought I should. Mm -hmm. And like, you need to do that work because otherwise there's no point. Like you'll go to extreme hunger, you, your extreme hunger will end. And then somehow again, you'll end up on another diet for another guy. Yeah. And like, now I know for sure, I will never end up on a diet ever again for anyone. Like no guy, nothing to like fit into a dress, clothes, nothing. Like I know I'll never do that. That's because like I sat with like the uncomfortableness, mm -hmm. like, for a while I was like why am I doing this like why am I going through this is because like I want to live yeah yeah like, yeah and that's full freedom right so many people don't even know that there's full freedom because maybe they've been in quasi recovery or they ha don't even know about this approach and so yeah they they don't have that level of freedom in their awareness but that level of freedom is possible, like to where you're not on the verge of going back on a diet again any day because you just like are so dissatisfied with your body. Like there yeah. is this level of freedom where you know, like deep down, you could never go back to restricting. I could never go back to starving myself. Like even now, if I see someone like initially, like I'd see someone in like a size zero and I'd be like, hmm. I miss being that weight like maybe I should go back to that but like now I'll never do that like I am myself at my own size and like now once you like do the work and you figure out that you have a set point weight mm -hmm. and like once you realize that it's like no no wonder I had to like 
almost die to reach a size zero like my body was like you are not meant to be this size yeah. but like I was like no here's an orange for lunch like <laughs> right yeah that's like if I continued to like you know dye my hair blonde like over and over and over I'm just like why won't you stay blonde why won't you stay blonde or like just like shaving right that's another thing I'm gonna keep shaving and shaving why am I still hairy why do I like that's just our physiology and it's the same with our weight even in and see this is a good point like even in the world that we live in with hyper palatable foods you can still reach your weight set point right that's that's like the biggest thing is like well okay yeah the weight set point but what about the obesity epidemic what about you know that it's like and you showed, you know, you were eating McDonald's every day and like that didn't happen, you know? Yeah, it didn't happen. Like one day I was like, hmm, okay, I don't feel like eating McDonald's. Maybe I'll like just yeah. eat a sandwich or something. And like slowly I was like, but I was like, when I want McDonald's, I can always like have McDonald's. Yeah. Like, once you reach that mindset, it's like right now, like after this video, like if I don't feel like cooking, if I want to order food, I just like, order whatever I want to order and it's like that freedom of knowing you're gonna eat next yeah. is what also helped because like it, when I was starving myself I was like I'm gonna eat an orange for lunch but I was like I'll eat like an, an almond for snack and like I knew what I was gonna eat for the rest of the day and I could say yeah. exactly what I ate last month on a Monday because I, I had it in a book like I had a diary with all my food written down yeah and now I'm like, I don't even know what I ate like an hour before this. Cause I was like, I just probably just walked into the kitchen, probably ate a brownie, probably ate a fruit and just like walked back in here. Like once yeah. you reach that point and it's like, you have to, it's, you have like people who I want to get into recovery, you know, that at the end of the day, you have to listen to your body, like, and you have to eat, like not being afraid of food, like it's no point like you're gonna waste another four or five years of your life being like half like in half out and like you're gonna be so uncomfortable it's rather to be like all in go to like the real discomfort for like however long it takes mm -hmm. and to reach because I could have easily like eaten like added like extra food like here and there and I could have like gained maybe 20 30 pounds been at like my normal weight but still mentally I would have been so uncomfortable and my weight would be yo-yoing so much mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now it's like yeah I don't even care about like my weight like I can see it's I can see it's stable but like I don't even care anymore and I just like eat whenever I want to eat and like food does not revolve my life at all anymore yeah that's so amazing and that's you know this is gonna be so inspiring to other people hopefully, you know, to really just like commit and surrender and just like expect discomfort, like expect it. Like it is going to be just like uncomfortable. Not yeah. You're not going to, that's the thing is like, if I can control how comfortable I feel, then I can bear this process. No, it's going to be uncomfortable. So like, you know, finding a way to just accept that, you know? So if you, you know, if you could say one thing to someone who's on the fence of committing 100% and going all in, going all the way, what would that be? Oh, that's a, that's a good question. I'd be like, you know what, stop wasting more years of your life. Like, yeah. at the end of the day, you are going to end up like wasting like four or five years of my year life in discomfort. And you're going to be so exhausted after five years, for example, and you're going to be like, now I give in now I just let myself when instead you should have just like done it when you were all in like, yeah. for example, like for me, like when I was like 15, when I was like trying to die, like I should have just like been like, go all in like stop doing quasi recovery, like you don't have, you can't maintain your weight. Just like stop wasting years mm. of your life. Yeah, I love that. Yep, that's what it's all about. Right? Yeah. Like if you go all and spend a few years, few months, however long it takes in like full recovery, like it is worth it at the end. Like I know it's horrible. Like you've been through it. I've been through it. There's so many people going through it, like the extreme hunger recovery. Like it is not easy. It's like that's that's why so many people don't recover is because it's not easy at all oh yeah I mean people think 
you know, oh, willpower and self-discipline with your diet. That's so hard. Well, you know, talk about willpower and self-discipline. It's sticking to your recovery and not falling into quasi-recovery, right? So like redefine your definition of willpower and self-discipline because like this, this is actually really hard work and commendable, you know? It is. And you need to remind yourself every single morning when you wake up, you're like, I choose recovery. I choose myself. Like yeah. you need to tell yourself this, like I'm not living for anyone else. And like, once you realize this, it's like, eat I'm just gonna eat and I'm gonna recover and I'm doing this for myself I do not care what anyone else thinks mm-hmm. yeah and you need to reach that point yeah and like yeah. stop wasting time like it's not you were never meant to live your life obsessed about food like never never you never meant to live your life obsessed about your weight your weight will settle down yeah it will it you'll reach a weight where your body is comfortable it won't be a size zero if you're not meant yeah. to be a size zero Like I was never meant to be a size zero. Mm -hmm. So it was so hard, but like my body will settle down in a size where it feels comfortable and you just have to accept it and let go and find other things in life other than your weight. It is hard in this world because like everyone is still obsessed about their weight. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. And that's a whole nother topic (laughs) is like, yeah, just living in the world we live in, you know, but yeah, I love everything that you said that all of that is so true. You know, all of that is like, you need to do that. You know, it's a non-negotiable. It's so, non-negotiable. Yeah. yeah, spend a few months, few years, however long it takes and just like focus on recovery and like you will make it out at the end. Like everyone yes. does if you just like stick to it. Eat, 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 eat. And yes. rest. <laughs> yes, and believe. Yeah. I want to end it here, but is there anything that you want to leave with people? Like, is there one thing that you feel like you didn't say that you feel like you just want to get out? Maybe something that you wish you would have heard. What I wish would have, I would have heard that no one cares about your body more than you do. Like no one cares about you being a size zero. Like people think other people care about your body but no one does literally no one cares like you're the only one obsessed with your own body yeah that's good yeah something that I had to really realize was like not everyone's looking at me 24 7 you know (laughs) right I I really like operated off of that like everyone's looking at me and judging me and what are they thinking and then like I started realizing like (laughs) people aren't yeah (laughs) <laughs> everyone's dealing with their own things like another girl for example is walking past me who's a size zero in her mind she's like oh my god she's looking at yeah. me because I'm a size zero but in my mind I'm like oh my god I'm too fat why isn't she looking at me like everyone is in their own minds like yeah. no one cares if you're a size zero size whatever like everyone's just obsessed with their own weight yeah, like, yeah. yep that is so important right yeah well okay on that note Seriously, thank you so much for coming on the channel and sharing your story and just all that you've learned this far. This, like this, I love this. I love your energy. You're so funny. But yeah, I think this is going to help a lot of people. So just thank you for spending your time today. No problem. I hope all of you guys, like you stay in recovery, like it's worth it at the end. Yes.